Let's go. Round of applause. Looking good. Good show. Hello, they did what they were supposed to, to do. In Los Angeles, and thanks for joining us today. We're excited to share what we've been working on for the past few years. For Black Ops 6, we really wanted to give ourselves the time to craft something truly great. This means we're delivering a new level of polish and innovation across all parts of the game. I've been working here for over 20 years, and I can tell you that we have something special on our hands with Black Ops 6. And I know that the team are excited to give you a deep dive into our campaign and global innovations across the entire game. Let's go. With Black Ops 6, we're taking players to a new but familiar era, the early 90s. In true signature Black Ops fashion, our story builds on real history, thrusting players into a conspiracy where a shadowy force has infiltrated the highest levels of the US government, branding anyone who resists as traitors and forcing players to go rogue for the first time to fight the very machine that created them. The team has been meticulously crafting every aspect of this game to deliver the fun and attitude players expect from the Black Ops franchise. Multiplayer is of course here and brings the Black Ops style and provides a playground for the brand new Omni Movement System. New way to push beyond your limits and move like an action hero. You'll see a sneak peek of that later today. Round-based zombies is absolutely back and better than ever. And okay. you can be sure it's full of surprises. With that, let's step into the mind-bending campaign experience we've been crafting with our partners at Raven. No turning back now. Every Call of Duty player has a favorite campaign mission. When we set out to make Black Ops 6, we were focused on delivering missions so iconic that they stick in your memory long after. We are bringing that action-packed blockbuster feel to every step of the narrative. Let's go. We are giving you more variety, more dynamic moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and more options to finish each mission. We can do this loud or quiet. The game is packed with unexpected moments of Black Ops mystery. It's a high-octane spy thriller where you're never sure who to trust and what's real. And it's all set against the backdrop of the early 90s. The Soviet Union was crumbling after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War. The US is the only remaining superpower. The Gulf War was dominating headlines everywhere. And there was a growing mistrust in government reflected everywhere across the music, television, and pop culture of the time. When we talk about the Black Ops timeline, Black Ops 6 comes after the events of the Cold War, but is directly tied to the 1986 flashbacks in Black Ops 2 the aftermath of which has left our heroes in dire circumstances. Some you should see. Black Ops 6 blends the rich and gritty history of previous franchise titles with bold new characters, with veteran Frank Woods as our through line in our story. In this new chapter, we see a different side of Woods following his traumatic injury at the hands of Raul Menendez. He's been pulled from the field as he adjusts to a new role within the CIA, often behind a desk or on the other end of a radio. His protege is Troy Marshall, who's been making a name for himself in the field. Marshall is a reluctant leader driven by a strong moral compass. Marshall and Woods are working with another new face in Black Ops 6, CIA handler Jane Harrow. She's a born leader, fearless and brilliant, and helps manage their relationships within the agency. Woods' ability to operate in the shadows has always been hugely valuable to the CIA, whether they want to admit it or not. And Marshall has the ability to make tough calls in the field, ones that Harrow trusts him to make. But when an operation goes wrong, Woods and Marshall are suspended and ultimately forced to go rogue. They soon realize they have to trust each other to get to the bottom of what's going on. Without any of their usual resources, they have to build their own team, recruiting two exciting new characters in Felix Newman, a technical genius, and Savati Dima, a mysterious assassin. With the end of the Cold War, these former enemies have become new allies. And with the sudden return of notorious operative Russell Adler, who'd gone missing for months, a former ally may have become a new enemy. Interesting. 
For the Black Ops single player campaign, we prioritized mission variety and unique experiences. Our goal was to offer players a wide variety of mission types, each crafted from the ground up. One moment, you'll be storming a palace. The next, you'll be pulling off a heist at a casino. We aim to take players all over the world and immerse them in vastly different experiences. Within these missions, we wanted gameplay to unfold in multiple ways, giving players the freedom to navigate through them as they see fit. Where we have different combat styles, we also have conversation opportunities where you can talk, barter, and manipulate your way into different experiences. And we think you'll want to replay levels to see them all. We are excited to offer a variety of different enemy types in the campaign. The goal was to provide different challenges for the player. So whether they choose to go in guns blazing or take a stealthier approach, line them up right, you can take them both out with one shot. Wow. Nice and quiet. You've continued to push on what's possible in terms of how our enemy combatants behave. Your enemies will be relentless, constantly seeking to outmaneuver you throughout the levels. Yeah. Nice. We'll escape routes push on player's location and force them to think on their feet. We've created certain missions where we give you a high level objective and a variety of ways to approach that objective. One mission in particular takes place in a vast desert in Iraq. You and your team are hunting down missile launchers with the SAS. It's one of the largest campaign maps that we've ever created. Look alive, people. I know we're coming. This is incredible. You'll find that some of our destinations have a startling contrast in look and feel as well. We have a mission that takes place in an opulent casino in Southern Europe. It's unlike any past mission in Call of Duty. And what the player does in this space is totally unexpected. And another one of our missions we have set in the harsh tundra of Northern Russia. We are excited to offer an array of brand new equipment, as well as some favorites from the Black Ops universe. RCXD, tranquilizer trap, adrenaline stem, homing knife. Homing knife? Disruptor. The campaign is grounded within an expanded campaign hub called the Safe House. You might remember we also had that in Black Ops Cold War. But this time, we wanted to think a little bit more broadly about the environment. We chose to have our team's hub located in a more naturalistic setting. So it's in an abandoned manor by an ocean cliffside. What's most unique is that it used to be a KGB black site, which was operational during the 50s and 60s. This hmm. brings a lot of intrigue to the safe house and will allow players to explore and discover secrets from the past. The team is also bringing back the evidence board, which is still the centerpiece of the safe house experience, but with brand new upgrades. Players can view the campaign outline, gain deeper insights into missions, and analyze evidence collected throughout missions. Okay. Okay. We also have what we're calling intelligent movement, which is a set of features that drastically reduces how many buttons or keys you're pressing to perform various movements. These can be enabled in player options. Let me go over here. That was sick. Oh, great. I think we got it. With Black Ops 6, our goal is to create a more connected experience that keeps players immersed across every single mode. We've pushed ourselves at every corner to innovate and craft the most signature Black Ops experience for our players. Movement has been a consistent area of focus and innovation for Call of Duty. And with Black Ops 6, we're redefining movement across the entire game. For the first time ever, players can sprint in any direction and move like a true Black Ops action hero with an entirely new global system we call Omni Movement. This unlocks the ability to move like never before and seamlessly chain combat maneuvers like slide, 
dive and our enhanced supine prone in full 360 degrees range of motion. That's crazy. From the beginning, we started with, you can't do this thing, why? And then realized people actually move that way. What happens if we get rid of that construct? And then instantly it opened up like, oh, if you can sprint in any direction, then you can dive in any direction, you could slide in any direction, which then led to all the on the ground movement and everything else chaining together. It's really been something that changes how you think and play the game, whether it's campaign, MP, or zombies. We truly believe that once you experience Omni movement, there's no going back. These guys are going to be diving through the windows. We also have what we're calling intelligent movement, which is a set of features that drastically reduces how many buttons or keys you're pressing to perform various movements. These can be enabled in player options, and they're broken down into three categories. Sprint Assist, Mantle Assist, and Crouch Assist. And each of these settings will allow for fine tuning. Intelligent movement really started with this idea that we want all players to focus on what they want to do and not how to do it. We want every player, regardless of skill level or input or experience with Call of Duty, to be able to engage with Omni Movement and live out their own action hero fantasy in Black Ops 6. We looked at other genres like racing games where they have these great assist settings that can be turned on and off. Things like traction control or assisted braking. And we really love the idea of taking that thinking and applying it to our own movement Ooh. options. I don't think this is a one size fits all thing. And I encourage players to play around with combos of these settings to really dial in their preferred setup. Hit zones are regions on a character that react when taking damage or dying. Yes. In past games, we've only had four regions. For Black Ops 6, we've actually increased that to nine regions. So we, now we can determine if that enemy was shot in their left leg or right leg, and then we'll play a bespoke death animation depending on that location that they were hit. Mm. So world connectivity is this concept that players' movement and reactions are connected to the world based on their choices. A great example that really shines is a global feature we call corner slicing, where as you round a corner or go through a doorway, your weapon's gonna dynamically rotate in the direction that you're rounding that corner. And since it's dynamic, it'll be a bit more dramatic if you're slowly clearing a room, but won't affect you at all if you're barreling full speed around that same corner. This is gonna be We're crazy. We're constantly looking for opportunities to set the bar with movement and animations in Black Ops 6. This is gonna be crazy. team is super thrilled to show you the best looking characters that we've done. Through our process of photogrammetry, gear was acquired, scanned, and incorporated onto each of our operatives. For our faces, a dynamic real-time analysis of spontaneous performances was captured and processed to make every emotional, impactful moment true to actual life. We made sure to have special attention to the cuticles and make sure that they don't look like they're just freshly cut. There's dirt in between their nails, and the oils on their palms as they're sweaty and running through situations that they're in. Wow. Paying attention to every detail. The thing that I'm most excited about is the number of new weapons from the era that we've added, which includes many that are brand new to the franchise. Our heroes are rogue operatives and they operate outside the normal playbook. That means they're procuring gear by any means necessary and it allowed us to pull a unique mix of weapons. Mm. We made sure to deliver dozens of unique attachments for every gun and this allows the players to create a weapon to match any playstyle that you can imagine, all while maintaining the feel and tone of the era. In Black Ops 6, we really strive for striking that balance between real and hyper-real, but we want to ground our effects in realism. We find real-world reference so that we can match that motion, the weight, the timing, then riff off of that and create that hyper-real look that everybody has come to know and love from Call of Duty. Wow, let's go.
The Black Ops 6 user experience is all about focusing players on what they need when they need it, and our in-game HUD is no different. From the mini-map to the ammo widget to in-game notifications, the Black Ops 6 HUD combines some of our best designs in a clean, streamlined experience. I love it. For the first time in Call of Duty, players will be able to change their HUD in dramatic ways to suit their needs. Yes. For instance, streamers can choose a layout optimized for their setup, or maybe you want your HUD centered so you don't have to look away. Want to play hardcore anywhere, or finally put the mini-map in the bottom left? Those are options as well. Not only does the HUD give players important status, it connects them to the world and helps them feel rewarded for being awesome. As players track that elusive challenge or target their next level unlock, Black Ops 6 delivers an end-to-end -end experience from the lobby into combat and back, where player progress and achievement are celebrated in a big way. Let's go. Early on in Black Ops 6's development, we set a goal to make leveling and XP matter more than ever. Looking back through the Call of Duty and Black Ops catalog, there's a lot of love, both internally at Treyarch and that we see in our community, for how we used to handle prestige. Traditional prestige is back in Call of Duty with Black Ops 6. We've pulled the best of the best from past Call of Duty prestige systems and are going bigger and more rewarding than ever. Players who reach max player level will have the choice to enter prestige, start fresh with relocked gear, and go through the leveling journey again. Black Ops 6 will have 10 prestiges, each with a valuable set of rewards to earn and equip to peacock your status. Players Love who it. make it through prestige 10 aren't done. Instead, they'll graduate into Prestige Master with a thousand additional levels to climb through and a classified a reward thousand? to uncover for anyone dedicated enough to make it all the way to the end. The full Prestige system is available on day one in Black Ops 6. Nice. Wow. We know how many of our players look forward to multiplayer, and we will be providing a deep dive on it later in the year. For now, here's some insight into our development of Black Ops 6 multiplayer. Our vision since day one has been to craft an approachable and engaging step change of that signature Black Ops multiplayer experience. We focused on supporting three core play styles for launch. Enforcers are the slayers who like to kill and stay on the move. Recon is all about intel and counter intel play. And strategists are support players who throw their bodies at objectives for the win or focus on taking out enemy score streaks for the team. Mm. All of our weapons, gear, and gadgets in multiplayer have been intentionally designed through that lens of supporting these play styles. And of course, it wouldn't be a Black Ops game if you can't relive those action hero moments in theater mode which we're happy to announce is returning with Black Ops 6. That's cool. Now I said we're only getting a taste of MP today, but of course that means you're gonna get some early details on maps. We're happy to announce that we will be launching with 16 all new MP maps. We've got 12 core 6v6 and four strike maps, which can be played as 6v6 or 2v2. What do players like? What do we know that they want? So we're back to our classic three lane maps. We've got fast frenetic experiences and we have that balance with more medium size, like better for hardcore pacing to keep the action flowing, but still have meaningful decisions for the player to make. The maps have their own stories and we have multiplayer taking place after the campaign, after you finish it. So don't wanna get into too many spoilers there, but you'll experience some of those locations through the multiplayer lens. I dig it. We've covered a lot today, but couldn't leave you without giving you just one more thing. Yeah, yes, let's go. Round Base Zombies is back, and we're picking up the Dark Aether storyline where we left it. We're excited to announce that there will be two brand new maps available at launch, with a curated mix of fan favorite features and new elements to discover. For those new to Zombies, it's our unique take 
on the cooperative horde mode, where every map is packed full of powerful weapons and upgrades, deadly enemies, and tons of secrets to uncover. The legacy of zombies is incredibly important to Treyarch, and we are so proud of what the mode is bringing to players in Black Ops 6. As you've heard today, the innovations in movement systems will also be coming to zombies. Plus, there are many additional zombie-specific features, both new and returning. This is going to be a truly epic return for round-based zombies. Be on the lookout for more intel coming later this year. Love it. Steph interviewed AB Mark. Now, we know we only gave you a little taste of multiplayer here today, so make sure to mark your calendars for our worldwide multiplayer reveal event at Call of Duty Next on August 28th. Make sure to stay tuned for details and watch your favorite streamers get hands-on Black Ops 6 so you can be prepped and ready to jump into our MP beta and feel omni-movement for yourself. We'll be sharing so much more about Black Ops 6 in the coming months and look forward to seeing your reactions and your feedback from our open beta coming up this fall and into Let's launch. Let's go. And it's not just about launch because the team is already focused on delivering a ton of content in the live seasons, which we'll be sharing more about. Am I allowed to talk about Warzone yet? No. Our goal on Black wow. Ops 6 was, and still is, to make something that is the best work we've ever done, and frankly, the most fun to play. To do that, we deconstructed all of our gameplay, our systems, and content plans, and repeatedly asked how something could be better. In some cases, that led us to huge innovations like Omnimovement, where we're now allowing players to move how real people and operators move. In other cases, it led us back to some of our classic systems like Prestige, then taking that classic system through the ringer and making updates and improvements. Across our weapons, gear, operators, maps, and more, a huge push has been to hit the highest visual and audio fidelity possible the campaign tells an all-new Black Ops story where you're forced to go rogue and are being hunted by the teams that trained you. On top of that, the team is really focused on mission and engagement variety. This is incredible. Multiplayer is a key ingredient in the DNA of Black Ops, and hopefully, in this sneak peek, it was clear that every single part of the MP game loop will be improved and better than ever, from movement to shooting to footsteps to engagement systems to death. And last, but definitely not least, the triumphant return of round-based zombies. Zombies, yeah, for sure. There is so much more to share across all three game modes before the game officially launches on October 25th. October 25th. On behalf of the entire team, we can't wait for you to play Call of Duty Black Ops 6. I love it.